If a context-free grammar is ambiguous, it's possible for the same expression to be evaluated in different ways. So if we want to create a context-free grammar for ordinary arithmetic, it must be unambiguous, and we need to build in the order of operations. Given the derivative tree, we evaluate from the bottom. This means that the first production rule used corresponds to the last operation performed. So when we evaluate something like a minus a minus a, we need to evaluate this by performing that first subtraction a minus a first and doing the second subtraction last. So it needs to be introduced by the first production rule. And this caused us to introduce the rule s produces s minus t, where t could only produce a terminal symbol. Now, if we have both addition and subtraction, we perform these from left to right, so an expression like this would have to be evaluated by finding a minus a first, then subtracting a, then adding a. And so we could also include the rule s produces s plus t, where again t can only be a terminal symbol. So this gives us our production rules. And since t can only produce a terminal symbol, then even if an expression has both plus and minus in it, only one of s produces s minus t, s plus t, could be used at any given step. And so our grammar is unambiguous. Or is it? Remember, if you don't find your mistakes, someone else will. So, first of all, let's find a derivation and verify that it's consistent with our standard rules of arithmetic. So, the only rule that we have that makes sense at this point is s produces s plus t. And let's keep track of both our production rules and the derivative tree. So, this leftmost s produces s minus t. And again, this leftmost s produces s minus t. And at this point, we can replace all our variables with terminal symbols. So remember, we evaluate from the bottom up, so we'll drop everything down, and then work our way backwards, and we find. And so this derivation will evaluate our expression correctly as a minus a first, then minus a, then plus a, which gives us zero. So this seems to work, but let's prove that the grammar is unambiguous. So, remember, concrete never hurts, so let's consider an expression like this. Our production rules require that t be a terminal symbol, while s is the remaining part of the expression, and so this means s and t must necessarily be... And so the only production rule we can use is s produces s minus t. Of course, this only proves that the last step is unambiguous, so we have to consider what our steps will be for the remaining part. But notice that this puts us in the same situation we started, which suggests an induction proof. Remember, an induction proof shows that if something is true for n equals k, it's also true for n equals k plus 1, the next step. Now, since the last operation can be plus or minus, we actually need to include both possibilities. So clearly, a plus a or a minus a has an unambiguous derivation. You should prove this. So if there are n equals two terms in an expression, there is an unambiguous derivation. Now, suppose there's an unambiguous derivation if there are n equals k terms. What if there's one more term? Since there are two operations, we have to consider the two cases separately. So if the last term is added, then we have to split it as, and this is the only possible production since t can only produce a terminal symbol. But the first part is a string with k terms, so it has an unambiguous derivation. Consequently, our derivation will be s produces s plus t. We have no choice there. 
the unambiguous derivation of the first part, which, since it has k terms, we know this exists, and then the unambiguous derivation of the very last term, again, no choice, and so the statement is true if the last term is added. Now, if the last term is subtracted, then, well, you should fill in the details on your own. And remember, it's a good idea to summarize. So, there is an unambiguous derivation if there are n equals 2 terms. And we prove that if there is an unambiguous derivation for n equals k terms, there is an unambiguous derivation for n equals k plus 1 terms. And so there is an unambiguous derivation for any number of terms, and consequently we have an unambiguous context-free grammar.